today we're installing Proxmox on my new home server. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what Proxmox is, Proxmox allows you to set up a virtual environment on your home server or whatever server that you're running it on. And it allows you just to create a bunch of virtual machines and manage the data, the storage, backups, and everything a lot easier. I've got a nice image here, which I'll bring up. And this kind of just helps you get a better understanding. So if you you might be familiar with things like vSphere ESXi, this is just an alternative to that. And the main reason I'm wanting to set this up on my home server is that it's going to allow me to experiment more and actually get more out of my hardware. So I just recently upgraded my home server to 64 gig of RAM. So it's a bit of a beast now for what I want to play around with. So an example of what I'm planning on using it for is that I'm going to have my main one virtual machine, which will run, you know, my Docker containers for the services that I actually want to run, like my website, uh, my Nextcloud instances and stuff like that. I'll have a dedicated VM for that. But what happens is being able to use Proxmox, I can set up other virtual machines to have a play around with, especially for this YouTube channel. So for example, I can set up things like TrueNAS, Unraid, and a bunch of other services that require the actual server to run that operating system so rather than having to you know use other hardware or actually wipe my actual server it doesn't really make sense so the, what this allows me is actually create a bunch of virtual machines and just virtualize everything so that i just get more out of my hardware and it just allows me to tinker more if i need it so i haven't actually used proxmox before i've used esxi but when it comes to proxmox I'm not very familiar with it. So it's going to be a bit of learning. Um, when I go into this, I'm not going to know much at all, but I, I think I'm going to understand the general idea on how to go about using it. So let's just plan out the structure for this video. All we're going to be doing is putting Proxmox on this USB. We're going to be starting up the server. I'll capture the screen of the initial install of Proxmox, which I'll be doing here. And then we should just be able to connect it over it via a web browser, and I should be able to do the rest of the configuration there. And generally what we'll just be doing is you're getting in the Proxmox, creating my main virtual machine that I plan on using, and then we'll probably end it there. And then this kind of sets us up for the future of developing more of the Proxmox environment and my main server, just so you can get an idea on how I plan on using it. And maybe you can get some ideas on how you could probably maybe use Proxmox or this could be something that you're looking for. So let's get into it. So the first thing, of course, we need to come to the Proxmox website. This is where I'm at now. And we can come to virtualization. Uh, a link will be in the description for this and you can just hit download and it just brings you here so you can see there's a few environments here there's a proxmox virtual environment the backup server or the mail gateway we just want the virtual environment so this is the one here that i want the uh, proxmox v 8.0 iso installer i'm going to download that so i'll see you in two seconds once it's all on the usb and as you can see we've just flashed the usb so it's all ready to go. So I'm going to change the angle up a bit. We're going to get the camera facing the screen because of course we can't record this section um, directly. So I'll just record the screen. Might be a bit annoying. Um, apologize, but that's the setup that I have. And then once we're all set up from that point, we can carry on just via our web browser. While the server is shutting down, I just wanted to take a quick moment to say thank you so much for allowing me to hit 3,000 subscribers. We've just blown past that, uh, which is insane. Uh, we also passed 350,000 total views. The support has just been amazing. So all I can say is thank you guys so much. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying the content. Uh, we're forming some sort of like cool little community as well. Uh, there's been a lot more engagement in the uh, comments and whatnot. So really appreciate it. I love that you guys are trying these out and I'm able to help you where I can. Um, it's just a bit of fun, right? The whole self-dosing thing. So thank you guys so much. Um, I'm not one to, to bash to subscribe and stuff like that, but if you're keen to join the little community that seems to be forming, make sure to subscribe um, and just, yeah, follow along with the fun. Anyway, let's get to installing this. Okay, we are finally at the Proxmox uh, install screen. Now, when I say finally, uh, I had to disable secure boot on the server, and man, what a pain that was. Every time I would change it, it would just reset itself. Uh, that was just annoying. Anyway, let's get into setting this up. So we've got two options actually. We've got graphical and console. And I think um, let's just go graphical, eh? Why not? All right, we have a mouse. All right, let's click I agree. You probably can't see it. It's right at the bottom right hand corner. I apologize and I really um, thanks for uh, putting up with the screen setup. Hit agree. Right, so what have we got here? The Proxmox installer automatically partitions your hard disk and installs required packages and makes the system bootable from the hard disk. All existing partitions and data will be lost. That's fine. All right, let's hit next. Oh. Hold on, so we got down at the very bottom, you can't really see it, it says uh, target hard disk, um, and it's asking us which one we want to install it on. I've got my Samsung 500 gig NVMe, which I'm going to install it on that one. 
So let's hit next. Country. Right, I just set my country, nice and easy. Hit next. Admin password and email address. So let me quickly do that. Okay, we've added those in, so we'll hit next. And now it's saying here, please verify the display network configuration. You'll need a valid network configuration to access the management interface after installing. After you've finished, press the next button. You'll be shown a list of options that you'll choose during the previous steps. Okay. Right, so I'll just quickly show you what I've got. So as you can see there, I've just set up the, the host name, right, which I'm going to call electron.local and the IP address configuration for it. Please confirm. So, yep, we're going to install it on that disk there, New Zealand, my email address. Uh, we're going to be calling this uh, electron. Yep. And it's the IP address and everything like that. Very good. And we're going to hit install. And now it's installing. So I guess we'll just leave it for now and then we'll come back once it's all done. Right. So that was quick and easy. So it's saying here we can reboot now and we can actually access the server on. Okay. <laughs> it didn't hang around that for too long, did it? Um, we can access it on that IP address anyways uh, to access the web console. So I'm assuming we can just go back to my MacBook now and we'll be good to go. Let's just make sure this actually boots. Yeah, there we go. All right, so it's just in the command line and it says, you can't see this, it's um, very blurry, but port 8006. So let's jump onto the MacBook and let's get some actual captured uh, content now. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can access it. So 192.168.68.120 on port 8006, enter. This looks promising. So we'll hit advanced, proceed. Cool, radio. So we've hit a login screen. Let me make this a bit bigger. Oh, okay. The username's root. Um, all right. So we're in Proxmox. So this, <laughs> I've, I've got to try um, wrap my head around everything here. So this I'm familiar with. So this here is, because you can have multiple like servers, right, within a data center. And at the moment, we've just got the one, which makes sense. All right, so looking at the disk, we can see that I've got all my disks here. Um, I could actually pull this USB out because we don't need it anymore. But I, I'm thinking that I've been partitioned because I'm from my older install. So we're probably going to have to clean up all of these disks. So let me quickly do that. Right, so I've just, I could be doing all this wrong. I, I probably need to sit down and have a bit of a read. Uh, but I've just created a storage storage here, which is the one terabyte drive. So I can actually create some stuff on it. So we're just going to use this for now. So let's just create a VM and see how we go. Right, so there's going to be a bit of learning. So I can wrap my head around how to actually use Proxmox. But again, I think what I like about these videos and what I like to show people is that I just learn as I go, right? So installing all of this i have no idea and i might have to break things remove things and rebuild things but this is just how i learn i like to be very hands-on um so what i want to do now let's just create the vm right my my main vm and let's see if it sticks around or not <laughs> so what we're going to need to do is that so on the left hand side here we've got the main data center right and we've got electron which is my main server and then in here i've got some disks that i've created so there's the pb storage which is kind of like the main storage and then there's some local storage. This local LVM was also made. But do you see here how it says ISO images? So we need to upload an image. And luckily, I've already got one. So I can click Upload. And let's just find uh, the Ubuntu image that I downloaded. And let's just load it up here because we need that to be able to create my VM. So there's the Ubuntu one. And uh, let's hit Upload. And now that's uploading onto the server. So we'll just wait for that to do its thing. This is quite cool though, right? We now have like this really cool environment where I can create my main VM, but also create other VMs to demonstrate for my channel and to show you guys some cool things. I don't need to worry about trying to find hardware that I can run the stuff on. I can have my hardware dedicated to doing its thing. And now I have an environment where I can spin up VMs, blow them away um, and just test things. I'm excited for this. Also, I know I do a lot of explaining and showcasing things, but if you are honestly noticing things that I could be doing better or there's some proper default stuff I should be doing, let me know. And I'm more than happy. I, I don't take any um, criticism, constructive criticism in a bad way. If you've got tips for me, let me know. I'm more than keen to follow along. But we've got that uploaded now, that image. We can see it here, which is awesome. So what we can do now is we can uh, create a VM, hopefully. So let's do that. So it's going to be on the Electron node, VM ID 100. I guess that's just default. Um, I'm assuming I might need to create a resource pool. I'm not sure, uh, but let's just see what happens. So uh, let's just call this Electron uh, VM for now, and we'll hit next. Uh, we'll grab that ISO image, and we'll hit next. So system, 
uh, we'll leave it default machine default I guess BIOS default we'll just leave everything default right so disk pretty sure this is all just SATA um, we'll put it on the TV storage disk size um, we'll give it 256 gig uh, we can always give it more I think as we go along but that could be good for now one socket um, we'll give this four cores and we'll just leave that as default and we'll hit next memory i have 16 gig oh sorry 64 gig in this thing now so let's just give this um 16 gig so i think 16,000 uh, megabytes hit next network um i think a bridge is fine that's all i've got anyways and we'll hit next so this is very much just guessing at this point. I believe, just from my prior experience with virtualization, I think this should be all good. I'll hit finish. And we now have our VM here. So, let's hit start and cross our fingers and see what happens. All right. So, let's um, install. I'm assuming we get a better display. Oh, yep, there we go. Uh, that's a bit better. <laughs> Set up the server. So, English. Nice. Um, yep, that's fine. We'll just keep that Ubuntu server as it is. And the IP address that it's going to give this one is 119. That's fine. So done. I have no proxy. And let's see if we can actually hit the internet. Let's hopefully the, uh, the network configuration works. That looks good. Great. All right. So the VM can hit the internet. That's the main thing. Um, yep, that's going to be the disk because that's the only disk that it has hit done we're just going to let uh ubuntu set up the partitions for us i'm pretty happy with it I'm, I'm not dealing with multiple disks or anything like that so let's just hit done it's fine all right my name tech docs server's name i'm just going to call it electron cloud it's so i'm not happy with that name <laughs> that is what it is <laughs> uh, anyway right let's set that it's done if you've got better names let me know i can always just rebuild this i just want to test this for now i think and we'll hit continue um open ssh server yep let's install that yep i love how you can grab their ssh keys from your github so good and i don't want to install any of this stuff by default because when you install things like docker from like using snap it always breaks for me it's always been crap so um i'm not going to do that <laughs> right so it looks like we have anyway it looks like we have proxmox set up well right and we've got a vm and it's all creating so let's just get through this see it working and we'll close it up it's booting up that looks good right we're in the server nice let's see what um the resource looks like yep it's running smoothly um hardly any of the cores have been used memory 201 meg out of the 16 gig and we're all good to go this is awesome so now we can do things like installing docker and set it all up i've already covered a lot of that stuff so i'm probably going to go through that myself but I'm keen to cover more of Proxmox and whatnot as well, just so I can learn it as also um, help you guys learn it as well. And maybe you can also teach me some stuff. Uh, I've got a bit of reading to do, it seems though. But yeah, look at this. We've got our server running. We can come into the uh, the summary, see how it's going, CPU usage and all of that good stuff. Uh, I, I don't like the fact that I'm in some like root user. I'm going to make sure to change that uh, so I'm not using a root user. I just don't like using that. Um, and then yeah there's some documentation here and yeah i think i've got some reading to do but i'm pretty psyched now the home server is running proxmox it's got a vm set up i'm probably going to blow this vm away and actually try wrap my head around it to actually create what i want but and make sure i get the storage and everything utilized properly but right i know that video was kind of all over the place uh there tends to be that way especially when i'm learning new things but hey this is just the way i learn and i also like to just showcase my way of going about things right um it's not clean uh it's all over the place and then i normally come back and start cleaning things up uh so i can understand them a bit better but we got there in the end we got proxmox installed we got a vm running and uh now we can continue down this path of playing around and i can use this for showcasing server images and whatnot that i just want to show um and demonstrate so yeah thank you so much for watching if you made it right through here make sure to, to give a thumbs up put a comment below um if if you're using Proxmox and if you are, how are you using it? Uh, any tips and tricks that you could pass my way? Let me know. Otherwise, yeah, I've got a bit of reading to do. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.